My name is Michelle Wandel, and I'm a trustee of the Finlandia Foundation National. And actually, despite my, my name, I am born and raised in Finland. I'm a happy sauna owner and an enthusiastic supporter of all things Finland. Today, it's my pleasure to host this final session of the Sauna Week programming. Now, everybody should be seeing what Finlandia Foundation's website look like. We are a uh, non-profit organization championing Finnish culture and heritage across the US by supporting and promoting all kinds of culture and educational programs and opportunities, including grants and scholarships. The foundation was founded in 1953 by Yrje Paloheimo in Pasadena, California, and we currently have about 50 chapters and affiliations around the country. The National Sauna Week is one of the many activities that we have launched and as a way to educate and inform the public of Finland in America. And specifically with this project, this Sauna Week, we want to enlighten people of uh, this fundamental piece of, of Finnish culture. All of the Sauna Week webinars and other related programming is available or will be available on our website and uh, you will be able to go and find it eventually here by clicking programs and going down. And uh, here we have National Sauna Week with some other programming already there. And uh, this is where you will find all kinds of resources about the sauna. So uh, one of the important things to notice here on our website is this little button here on the right-hand side, donate now. We are a nonprofit. Everything is based on how much people donate to this organization. The Paloheim Foundation is a big donor to us, but we have thousands of uh, private uh, people donating, and that is how we keep this, this show going. And uh, with that, let me introduce to you Jasper Päkkönen. Jasper, well, welcome to the program. We're very happy to have you here. For those people who may not know who you are, how would you introduce yourself? <laughs> First of all, hello everybody. Terve vaan kaikille, jotka puhuu suomea. Um, yeah, so I'm, 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 uh, I'm an actor from Finland. Uh, but uh, I tend to really consider myself first and foremost a fly fisherman because that's been my number one passion ever since I was a little kid. But uh, but people do know me as a, as an actor and and uh, and also a sauna entrepreneur. Um, I built and co-founded um, the public sauna Lul, which you can see behind me. Um, but let's see this. The structure in, on the shoreline of Helsinki, and uh, we opened about seven years ago, I think, or eight years soon. And um, and Lotus become uh, kind of like one of the best places to uh, to experience a traditional Finnish sauna in 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 Helsinki for anybody visiting Helsinki from a, from abroad. And uh, and I think according to the Helsinki tourism officials, it's become one of Helsinki's top three uh, most visited sites or destinations. Um, so I kind of tend to wear many hats, uh, the fishing slash anything related to fish and rivers and, and uh, the environment that I so much love that comes first. And then I switch between, between the act her hat and the other the sauna man hat every every now and then very good actually ri rivers and fish and sauna of course all all go together very nicely in that you need to you need to have water or preferably water close to the sauna so having it by a river or by the sea is is uh is of course really what uh what it's all about yeah so, and obviously uh, being, a, being a passionate fisherman um, you know, if, if, if I fish salmon somewhere up north, you know, the Norwegian tundra or something, the, the best sauna experience would always be in that environment. You know, the, if, if there's a sauna on a fishing trip, 
it, it just makes the fishing trip so much more um, exciting and fulfilling. Yeah. What 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 is actually like the 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 coolest? <laughs> no point intended with the coolest, but the nicest sauna experience that you have had. What can, can you think of one 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 uh, specific? Uh, go into the sauna that really really sticks in your mind whether it's on a fishing trip or whether it's in Antarctica or wherever you might have been been taking saunas well I, I don't have one that stands out above everything above all the rest but but I would say that the the best experiences the best sauna moments I've ever had uh, many of them have been you know by a river on a fly fishing trip with friends after a long day or actually many times after a long night of fishing mm. and then we hit the sauna in the morning everybody's completely exhausted from fishing for 12 or 15 hours straight and then you hit the sauna you eat something and and, and crash uh sleep like a baby but um but if there's a sauna by you know by some white water by the rapids um the combination of fly fishing, spending spending time with my with my close friends and in nature, and then doing a sauna would be would be a pretty special one. Yeah, sounds sounds good. How 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 did how did sauna sort of become so meaningful for you? Is was was it something that in your childhood in in your family that you you uh, like sort of the tradition says about. You know, fin Finns in Finland, they all, you know, some of them went to the sauna every day. Others, it was the sacred thing on Saturdays that you did. How was it for you? And what, what has sort of made it really special to you? Yeah, I, I guess I guess the answer to how did sauna become so meaningful to you, the, the short answer is I was born in Finland and I'm from, I'm a Finnish, <laughs> Finnish human being. That's why sauna is so meaningful for me. But but just like anybody else in Finland, you know, we we grow up going to the sauna with the family, and and a lot of times uh, in many families, certainly in my family, um, the weekly kind of like the Saturday evening sauna was was pretty much the most important, most meaningful time spent with the family. So I I, I guess we were a pretty average family in Finland when it comes to that, you know a lot of families in Finland really that the, the family sauna is something that's really valued and, and uh, that that's that's a very important uh, ritual and ritual is a is a funny word to use here because going to the sauna as as many people many listeners would know in Finland going to the sauna is not really considered anything that special because it's such an you know, such an essential everyday part of our lives. Um, so uh, oftentimes people would associate, you know, wrong meanings with the word ritual. You know, it is a ritual in Finland, but it's a very casual one. It's a ritual without people actually realizing it's a ritual because it's it's such a normal part of fin, Finn's lives. But, uh, but yeah, I would say I grew up in uh, ever since I was a little kid, I, I I grew up going to the sauna with my parents, with my grandparents, and and um, and just I can vividly remember the moment when you know little by little when you're a little kid, um, you can go higher and higher in the sauna, and, and uh, mm -hmm. eventually you can you know you have the strength, you're you're strong enough to sit on the highest bench with all the adults, and it's a it's a little bit of a rite of passage as well it's you know it's a very big important moment in a kid's life in Finland yeah that, that that's true this actually the picture I have behind me is uh, is uh, our sauna in Finland and and just came to think of when you say this how you go higher and higher uh, my son who is who is born in the states but has spent every every summer in Finland not that accustomed to saunas or saunas in in the beginning and how he sort of slowly had has gotten further and further up in the room just as uh, just as you say that, that 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 happened to you also so uh that's that's cool but hey go, going going back to Lulu a little bit how 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 did that whole 
thing come around, sort of come about. And, and I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy, fantastic structure. It's a, it's a real landmark in Finland. And uh, just, just, you know, te- tell people how, how, how this actually sort of came about. Sure, sure. The, the city of Helsinki wanted a public sauna to be built in, uh, in Hernessaari, which is um, right next to the center of Helsinki. It's like a 10 minute walk away from, from, from downtown Helsinki. And it's by the water. And uh, as you can see, I think, I think you can see an aerial, aerial shot yes. right now. And um, the, by the way, those, all of those industrial warehouse buildings are gone now. Not, it's just an empty field. And that area will be de- developed into a new thriving part of Helsinki. But, uh, but uh, so the city of Helsinki wanted a public sauna here and, uh, and they zoned the land and they gave out a building permit. And it, that building permit was held by, by actually by two different companies before me and one of my best friends, Anter Vartia, uh, acquired it. And those two other companies um, had all kinds of plans of how they could build a public sauna. Um, on that piece of land, and and I think they just couldn't figure out how to make make it a profit profitable business because because they weren't able to uh, complete their project. And uh, Antero and I bought the building permit from the second company uh, that held it, and uh, and so we had you know the city of Helsinki. There was political will; they wanted this to be built there, and the the building permit already existed. Um, we then acquired it and then kind of like went to the drawing board and said, how are we going to build a public sauna that actually becomes great business? You know, how, how, how do we make it profitable business? And, uh, and one of the things we decided was to build with the highest possible level of ambition. So we thought, you know, it has to be, you can't just build a sauna, you know, it has to be, an amazing sauna and it has to be so spectacular that anybody visiting Finland or visiting Helsinki need, absolutely need to see, they, they just need to see this place. And uh, in comes architecture. Architecture has, a, has an immense pull, uh, you know, a gra- gra- it's a gravitational force when they're in interesting architecture, people just tend to gravitate towards it. And uh, we teamed up with, uh, with with a Finnish architect company called Avanto um, Avanto Architects Ville Hara and Anu Pustinen and uh, and just basically ask them to go as crazy as, as they ever can and uh, and design the most incredible structure possible and uh, and then we just you know thought that the combination of this ancient you know thousands thousands of years old Finnish traditional health and wellness um, tradition. Uh, method, uh, way of life, g- combined with striking Nordic ar- architecture and uh, and a happening restaurant, would would create a place where people want to go, and uh, and I guess myself and Antero and one banker in in Finland were the only three people in the whole country who believed in the uh, the project because everybody else thought we were completely out of our minds. Everybody just thought that this is a um. This is a ridiculous idea. Why would you ever build something so expensive when you could just build a normal sauna and, you know, a normal house? And uh, this this project will go bankrupt in no time at all. And and uh, you know, friends and acquaintances and unknown people and uh, business consultants and experts and and construction companies and all of them said it. it this is a stupid idea. <laughs> um, but when two weeks before we opened, uh, New York Times reached out to me and said, we've heard that you guys are building this spectacular sauna in, in, in Finland. Can we be the first media to write about it? I thought, maybe, we, maybe it's not such a crazy idea after all. You know, if New York <laughs> Times wants to write about it, I think we've, you know, maybe, maybe it won't be a terrible. Yeah, terrible maybe business. you're on to something here. <laughs> And uh, and then then the, the day we opened the doors, uh, people started flowing in, and it's 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 become a really popular destination for both 
people who live in Helsinki as, as well as people visiting Helsinki, Helsinki from abroad. And nowadays, if you sit in the sauna, I would say on average, it's probably about 60 to 70 percent of the other client is, is foreign or tourists or visitors in Finland who, you know, when they visit Finland, they want to experience one of the most important parts of Finnish culture, if not the most single par- singular part of Finnish culture, you know, the sauna culture. Uh, there's just been a very limited uh, amount of possibilities to do that in Helsinki, Helsinki and and uh, and now when you sit in the in the sauna, you hear a lot of you know locals chatting in Finnish, and you hear languages from all around the world, and and then it also creates this communal feeling where introverted shy Finnish people all of a sudden come out of their shells and start talking to uh, unknown people. In, in the sauna, you know, sauna has that weird effect on on Finns. You, you, we does. forget that we're Finnish and we're supposed to be quiet and and introverted and and uh, <laughs> and shy. But um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a casual, nice. Despite the the architecture, we wanted to keep the the atmosphere as casual as possible. So you know, the the atmosphere has to be welcoming at all times, and uh, you you can. Come as you are. Nobody needs to feel intimidated by, by the place being too posh. You know, we charge uh, 21 euros for for entry to the sauna, which is something that especially American visitors often are super surprised about, and they tell me, you know, you should be charging three times as as much, or you know, this is not good business. You should charge so much more. But uh, but that then that would kind of take away the whole one of the most important aspects of 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 traditional Finnish public saunas. You know the communal aspect and the fact that when you enter a public sauna, um, there's no titles and there's no hierarchies and and as the saying goes, the janitor and the CEO go to the same sauna and sauna at the same you know they sauna enjoy the sauna at the same level, and uh, there's no wallets or or you know wealth inside the sauna and everybody's completely equal, and uh, if we priced the the entry fee higher then that important part of, of, of traditional Finnish public sauna culture would be eliminated from, from Lodu. So we want to keep it available for, for anybody and everybody. Yeah. So, so for those of you who haven't had the pleasure of actually visiting the place or, or taking a sauna there, you have, have this, you can see the picture where you have all these uh, umbrellas. That's, that's the restaurant part. There are, uh, a couple of different decks up where you have a fantastic view of Helsinki and the archipelago in front of it. And then you have the actual uh, sauna rooms and and, uh, dressing rooms and all of that is in this uh, bunker type structure there on on the right hand side. You have quite a few different types of saunas in there. any, any. Uh, I mean, I can pull up some some pictures from from uh, inside. Well, here is. Yeah, that's that's our private sauna. That's the smallest one, which is uh, wood burning, pretty traditional, normal Finnish wood burning sauna, uh, which is rented private for private groups and and you know little little groups of people. Um, but then we have two bigger, larger saunas. Then we've got a, a traditional smoke sauna, um, as well as a traditional, you know, s- single heated, uh, as opposed to continuously heated. So we heat it up once in the morning for five hours, and uh, and it keeps the heat all throughout the day and night, like a single single heated. How would you say it in English? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. One, one time he, heated. Um, uh, a sauna that you don't basically don't keep adding wood into the heater into the key was but um, yeah. it stays hot all throughout the day i'm not sure if you can pull out those other couple of pictures but ba- basically our our idea was that we need to provide um you know get as close to the traditions of this is the smoke sauna so that's that's the big heater that you see yeah. there and that you Climb up those stairs onto the shelves, you know, the the top top seats, and uh, 
and then that's that's where people are sitting all all around the uh, all around the heater. This is uh, this photo has actually been taken from underneath the long benches where people sit. Yeah, yeah that 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 looks like a industrial sized uh, heater there. I mean, that that heater big. weighs seven tons. It's basically seven tons of of brick and metal and uh, rocks. Yeah. So, when, when we heat it up in the morning, um, it stays hot pretty much all throughout the night until the next morning. So when, when we start heating it up again the next morning, you could still do like a yalki lölu, kind of after, after lölu um, sauna in the morning, and it would, it would be hot enough for that. Yeah. So that, that's, uh, that's interesting. Some, some people... what, I was, what I was saying is, what I was saying is the, uh, the, the, the idea was that we need to provide people visiting Helsinki with, with the most traditional form of sauna. So the idea of doing anything but wood burning was completely impossible for us. So it needed to be, a, you know, three wood burning traditional sauna and, and uh, the idea of doing something else. Yeah. We, yeah. we didn't even consider it. Yeah. Here, of course, most people have to uh, have to settle for for electric or infrared but again in the, the, those of, of, of you out there that are not from Finland or 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 have lived there there most of the saunas are wood fired and you have as 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 Jasper said there is the smoke sauna and there is the continuously heated and and then this sort of single shot heated which uh, are all gives a slightly different experience, and uh, just just as with snow, the Finns have you know thousands of words to describe the different kinds of experiences you get, and and uh, because that's that's so much part of the uh, part of the culture there. What 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 are you, by the way, sort of yourself? Are you more of a if if you get to choose what kind of a sauna room you go into, is it very hot? Is it more moderate? Is it a, a, a savo sauna or a smoke sauna or or what, what's your thoughts? I I like a really hot sauna. Um, I I tend to stay in the sauna for way too long. I tend to really punish myself and and uh, you know do my my sauna routine usually in Lulu would be four times in and out of the the sauna into the water back to the sauna, into the water, which usually takes about two hours. Mm. But uh, a lot of times the, the actual sessions inside the sauna, I tend to stay all the way until I'm feeling a bit too dizzy and, and uh, too exhausted. Mm. And I think there's just a little bit of a masochistic tendency with, uh, <laughs> with sweating it out almost to the brink of a collapse. But but I, I I really enjoy it. Whereas then my my business partner or previous former business partner Antero, who, who we built Lolu with, um, he tends to be a very he's a bit of a sissy when it comes to uh, staying in the sauna. So he, he's the complete polar opposite of me. You know he he'll be happy with a five minute quick quick sauna and and, uh, and then then he prefers to sit by the fireplace and and just chill. But yeah. there's no right or wrong way to do a sauna. I, I mean, each and every person chooses how they want to uh, enjoy their sauna. And uh, I always, that's one thing that I always tell everybody visiting Finland and visiting Lulu is that it's certainly not a competition and you stay as long as you want as, as you know, or as short as you want and uh, just walk out when you, when you feel like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one one thing that I forgot to mention early on is that that uh, all of you who are listening and, and watching this, you can uh, you can post questions that we will uh, we will look at once we get to the towards the end of this. If you have any any uh, specific specific thoughts or questions for for uh, Jasper and his uh, his his different. Sauna experience. I'm not sure if it's my internet, but I lost you. So let, let, let us switch to your to your next sauna project if you if you actually can can hear me now. And I wanted to 
share this picture with you. Uh, can you, Jasper, see what it is? Yeah, uh, so there in the little lower right corner, you can see a small, maybe you have another one with a bigger. I will. Uh, yes. with, with a bit of more, more of a close up, but it's Aito Sauna is, um, is a home sauna project that we started with Lölus Architects. So the same architects who designed Lölu um, designed these uh, uh, prefabricated homes that ship anywhere in the world. Um, built in Finland, as I said, prefabricated, meaning they're built ready-made and they ship inside a shipping container. And, uh, and we've just started the other uh, project, uh, started selling them. We haven't officially even launched yet, but we've sold the first saunas, um, a couple of them to Ibiza in Spain and one to Hawaii uh, in the wow. US. And, uh, and, but we're, we're just about to uh, officially do the launch. We've been, we've been waiting for, waiting to get as many good photo photos of the product from different environments, from obviously from Finland, but also from other places around the world to be then able to uh, do like a press release and a proper proper launch. But our intent was to build the most incredible, the best possible quality home sauna, built with the best materials, the best heaters, with the best components, and uh, and and then provide a really authentic, real Finnish sauna experience for people to enjoy all around the world. Because one of the big problems with saunas on an international level is that when you go outside of Finland, um, a lot of the, and this is true, unfortunately, especially in the US, is that the saunas are really actually not great saunas, oftentimes. Mm -hmm. There are exceptions to that, but a lot of times, you know, especially at gyms and spas, you you have rooms that are called Finnish saunas, but they're more they should be called called warm rooms. Um, you know, there's problems with the heater being too small and the temperature being too low, and and uh, and air ventilation is often a problem as well. Uh, they're not hot enough, yet you still feel quite exhausted because the oxygen, the air ventilation is just not working the way it should be. So you don't have enough oxygen in the air, which makes you then feel like it's super hot and exhausting when in fact it's not. So, and also yeah, with and the- then there's the big, then there's the big signs that says that absolutely throw no water on the stones. Oh, oh, yes, exactly, yeah. That's, that's, that's one of my favorites. I've, I've had numerous occasions on gyms in, in Los Angeles where I take my own water to throw it onto the uh, the sauna heaters rocks and you know that heater has been built made in Finland it says made in Finland <laughs> yeah. and uh, and when I throw water somebody freaks out and starts yelling at me for you know having everybody electrocuted and and uh, <laughs> yeah we have all had and that lecturing, and lecturing me about how this is a a dry Finnish sauna and the dry sauna never has water onto thrown onto the heater, and you know yeah. it's a different yeah. thing than a steam room. And I, you know, I try to cool people down and say, I am actually from Finland, and I know a thing or two about saunas. And trust me, you won't die, and you won't get electrocuted. And also, there's this thing called lolu, and you're supposed to <laughs> throw water onto the rocks. But a lot of times, it just, you know, it doesn't work. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that with the current sauna boom you know the health and wellness trends a lot of a lot of the uh you know you see famous health and wellness influencers and all kinds of influencers actually raving about saunas and how healthy they are and lots of great science coming out of the other uh, university of eastern finland when it comes to saunas health mm -hmm. benefits um, incredible health benefits that are now proven by by science but then you see people enjoy enjoy quote unquote enjoy saunas in 
quite mediocre or sometimes unfortunately quite terrible saunas mm. it's it takes a little bit more than just a warm room to really call it a sauna and uh so one of the reasons for this Aito sauna project was that we you know it stemmed out of this certain frustration uh, seeing how people around the world enjoy really bad saunas or mediocre saunas and we wanted to provide an opportunity or or an option uh to the market um that is as authentic and as high quality as we ever could could build and design yeah well it certainly looks uh it looks like very good quality it looks like a stunning finish design and I'm sure that the, the the actual craftsmanship is is likewise very very good. So we're uh, we're all eagerly looking forward to to uh, sitting in one and then eventually parking one in our backyards. So uh, that's uh, is it is it going to be uh, available here in the states at some point? Or at well, one? we sell, we only sell online, so we don't. Okay. Our plan is to just have a website, itosauna.com. And uh, and sell the saunas from there, basically like Tesla is selling their cars. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, if if a person nowadays can buy a car online, I think they should be able to buy a sauna as well. And uh, you yes. know, it's whole. It's it's basically a plug and play product. So a lorry brings it over um, to your backyard or wherever you want to place it, and uh, you plug in electricity. You plug in a garden hose or any water supply and you're ready to use it there's no foundations needed you don't need concrete foundations mm -hmm. it's a fantastic structure and uh and just, we just wanted to make it as easy as possible and like i said the one of the first orders came from hawaii so it, it in a way it is available in the u.s just as much as it's available anywhere in the world um through you know through the internet yeah yeah okay. here is I'm, I'm just looking at some of the q, q a coming in here e ero kilpi who is uh closely affiliated with us and 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 runs uh, uh the finlandia found or uh, they're, they're the local chapter in new york and also is is uh in charge of north american sauna society he uh he's just compliments here that it it's a, looks like a really nice hot box, <laughs> and uh, but I'm 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 sure Ero is one of those guys that will be in line for for getting one. Yeah, uh, you can. Uh, one thing because we spoke about different heaters, or you mentioned that there's mm -hmm. different types of sauna. We we you know the standard model because we don't expect customers, for example, in the U.S., all of them to be able to have a wood burning heater. Mm -hmm. So the standard model would be an electric, an electric heater built by Iki. They're handmade. I think the best quality heaters on the market, on the planet, really. And uh, you know, it has a Wi-Fi control system, so you can, when you leave work or when you leave gym or when you leave the sports match or something, you can go to the app and put the sauna on, and it's ready when you when you come home. But of course, being you know. A traditional Finnish authentic sauna. We also offer the um, the the chance of of having a wood burning heater for the for the ones who really want the real deal. Mm. Um, and I'm, not, I'm not too picky about. Sometimes you have great home saunas that have a electric heater. So I I really think it's the most important thing is that people actually enjoy a, a good sauna and the heater. Yes. It makes the experience more traditional, more authentic uh, for many people, a bit more meaningful when it's a, when it's a wood burner. But we have to understand that for most people in this busy life, in this hectic life that we live, you know, the luxury of, of spending an extra hour and a half heating up the sauna might be a bit too much. Or it, it cuts down the amount of times you actually end up using the sauna. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, as, as you said earlier on, I mean, really, the, the, the most important thing is, is really to have good air circulation, because that, that, is, that is key to, uh, to, to sort of a, a, good, a good experience. 
So actually, hey, there is there is one 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 question that came to me here on as as a text message uh, from a guy who is not Finnish but uh, but but a Swedish uh, sauna enthusiast, and he's asking about uh, the, the word load, what it really means and where it comes from. Do you, do you have do, do do you know that actually where where sort of any any history to it? Yeah, the the the. Etymology, etymology. It's, well, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> I think etymology. you were close enough. <laughs> uh, the, the, the origins of the word, I think, the uh, the ancient meaning for that word was soul, and uh, and it, in a way, you know, lulu means two things in my books. It's it's both a very concrete, you know, thing you where you throw water onto the hot sauna rocks and that steam uh that physical steam and the sensation is uh, the hot sensation it creates on your body uh, on your skin is called lul but also it's a very abstract uh word uh, you know kind of like meaning the spirit and the soul of each sa- sauna mm. uh, and every one of the finland has 3.3 million saunas and each and every one of those 3.3 million saunas has its own distinct, unique load, its own spirit. So there's there's something, um, you know, spiritual is a little bit of a tacky word to associate here, but there's mm-hmm. something, some something more, uh, certainly more deep um, when it comes to the meaning of that word than just just the steam that that is generated onto the on the sauna heaters rocks yeah yeah it it that's absolutely true i mean they 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 have they have slightly different smells they they come faster or slower depending on how your stone mass and and uh it's uh it it definitely it's it's like a fingerprint of of, yeah. of the sauna sauna itself i think so Hey, let's let's look at some of these questions that are dropping in. And here was one one that that pop, popped into into my screen here right away was that did you introduce Spike Lee to traditional <laughs> Finnish song, song? Yes, I did. Uh, Spike Spike visited me in Helsinki. Actually, he's visited me a couple of times in Helsinki now, and uh, and obviously one of the first things we've we've done is go to the sauna. He's, he's been to Lulu a few times, done all the different saunas, uh, smoke starting in the smoke sauna and, and moving on to the other ones. And, and uh, uh, yeah, it, I think I've made him a, a true sauna believer. Yeah, cool, cool. So uh, then, uh, uh, Rebecca here is asking, uh, first of all, thanking you, and then asking if if uh, if it's easy to get a reservation for a sauna and and a meal at Lulu in in June or July. How how, uh, how good does it usually get? Yeah, so the sauna side of Lulu is quite busy, so we always recommend booking in advance. But booking in advance means booking a few days in advance in advance. Um, a lot of times, especially during the busy hours, because we want to keep it keep the number of people limited, um, we can't take in walk-ins. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it's recommended to make a booking. But the restaurant in Ju- uh, June and July, as you can see in the photo, we have a massive terrace outside. So you're always guaranteed to find a find a spot. So. Actually, we don't even take reservations to the restaurant in June and July. It's mm. always first come, first serve. And because yeah. uh, we want to keep it in, in the summertime, we want to keep it really nice and casual. And it's not like, a you know, even the menu is more like Nordic bistro style food, really high quality ingredients, um, ethical choices when it comes to in, the, the ingredients. But then, you know, like really good quality burgers and and uh, traditional creamy fish soup finish you know a finished tradition and mm-hmm. and then a couple of like nicer fancier um, portions but uh, but it's not in the summertime it's not like a proper sit down restaurant with 
table reservations and and such but it's it's more like a happening bistro style restaurant yeah no it's a it's a i i have to put in my plug the food is really good the ambiance is very nice it's uh and as you say, I mean, you can sit at the table or there are lounge chairs and it's, it's uh, you know, people can really come and be and get out of it what they want. It's, uh, it's uh, certainly a high on the list of recommendations for anybody who, 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 who visits, visits Helsinki. There are quite yeah. a few. No, go ahead. No, I'm just, Dave December is asking how can I get more information and maybe order one of these saunas? I'm writing the website address www.aitosauna.com. So there's a re reply in his to his question there. Well, one 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 question that I have I have uh, also gotten here by by text message is uh, about the sauna hat. And I know that we have previously in the week during during the sauna week programming, there has been lots of discussion about the hat. And it's something that I at least personally wasn't really or never really saw as 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 uh, that people would have used very, very uh, regularly in saunas. What, what, what's your take? Do you use one? I mean, you go into hot saunas, so it would be probably more appropriate than for the sissies. Um. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my, my, my understanding is that the sauna hat tradition comes from Russia. Because uh, I, 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 I've done plenty of saunas in, in Russia on my travels. I used to go when it was still, you know, possible, uh, when the world was a little bit different. Um, I used to fly fish in the Russian tundra and I would visit Russian saunas. Uh, quite often, and uh, and you'd see most Russian men wear the sauna hats. Mm -hmm. So it, it's certainly a very essential part of the Russian sauna culture. Not so much the Finnish sauna culture. I do have friends who who wear sometimes wear a sauna hat. One of my good friends wears it every time. He's bald. He's shaved completely mm -hmm. bald. So he he prefers wearing the hat because um, otherwise his uh, bald head gets too hot. He says. But uh, but but it's not a very common thing in 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 the Finnish sauna culture. Yeah. That being said, some people love it. Um, I've never worn one. I've never had one. Yeah, yeah. I th I think it's it. I I, I agree. But also, it it's sort of uh, g given what sa sauna and the whole culture around it is. If you want to wear one, it's perfectly fine. Uh, but 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 you are not viewed as 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 a strange one if you if you come in without one or either way. So it's I think it's uh, it's it's fine. But but I also have the the understanding that it it originally is is sort of a Russian Russian thing in their in their banias. Yeah. So here here's a here's a, a interesting one. Have you ever been in the sauna with the dude sons? <laughs> yeah. Um... Plenty of times. Uh, Good. Must be, must be dozens and dozens and dozens of times. I'm the godfather of one of the dudes. Um, one of the small dudes. Children. Not not of one of the dudes and guys, but one one of the uh, the children of one of the dudes and guys. So uh, yeah, I know all of those four guys very well, and we go back, you know, a couple of decades, and, and uh, yeah. But I saw actually I saw. I saw a couple of new questions on the chat. Um, Kath Uzitalo is ask, saying, I read that Helsinki has protected or recognized Lölu as an important building. What does that mean? So the city of Helsinki has officially protected Lölu as a, it's a protected building, which means that the architecture is protected. You can't ever change it. Um, it has a protected status and I think this is a universal global thing you know some historical buildings and monuments and old old structures are protected um, probably in every every city in the world you have this but Lulu is the youngest building ever to have a protected status in Finland 
Um, wow. And basically, it just means that it can't be changed. Um, I, as myself, as the owner of the of the real estate and as the building, I could never decide to do a facelift and change Lulu into something else. It needs to stay exactly as it is um, from now to, <laughs> I guess, from now to. <laughs> So basically, it just means that when when I'm not on this planet anymore, mm. um, Lulu still will be looking just like it does does right now. Yeah, well, that that's that's quite uh, quite the statement there to uh, to actually have uh, have a modern building and a, and a and a creations of, of of yours, and of course, other people have have designed it, but 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 nevertheless, to have have that distinction already mm. is. Is uh, is really really meaningful, really cool. By the way, by the way I, I can see that my hair is getting cut off. So that's because the sun the sun is setting, or actually the sun set like 15 minutes ago, and the light yeah. is getting. Longer. I have all these little lights pointing at my face, but it's still not <laughs> enough to. Uh, <laughs> no, we have long- seen your head go up and down all the time, but that's that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly. Yeah. Fine. There is, uh, yeah, Kath is saying, but the wood will age, age and turn to gray, I believe I read. So yes, exactly. So here in this photo that you can see behind me, um, the wood is relatively new. This is probably taken uh, like a, probably a year after we opened, but we may have, do we have a photo of the other aerial photo that you showed, I think already shows Lulu and the wood um, kind of aged. So it's not yellow. It's not this orange, yellow, fresh pine anymore. It's uh, it's natural gray, and uh, that's something that we aimed for. We wanted the the wood to show aging, and uh, and basically the sun and the elements age it. We didn't use any treatments, so there's no chemicals or oils or anything like in the wood that would basically stop the aging process. We wanted to uh, to age. And that's a natural part of the building. Um, it's something we decided with the architects. So there, yeah. So you can see the gray, gray wood. This is pretty much how it looks like now. Um, so it, it's it's a feature of the building that that was built into the architectural plan. Yeah. No, it it looks uh, actually looks much nicer with, with the gray shade than what it originally did, but. But that goes for so many sa- saunas in 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 Finland that they uh, they they are not not treated and they uh, they sort of take take a slightly different color over time. Yeah, yeah. And then Naomi is asking, what is the protocol of speaking a lot in in the sauna? Is chatty okay? Um, I think the beauty of a of a pub, the traditional public sauna culture in Finland, is that it's a communal meeting place. Um, it's where people gather to to speak and and to chat and like I said, Finns tend to be very shy and introverted, but they they forget about, about that that fact when they enter a sauna and all of a sudden people speak to strangers. You know, we we are Finnish people are the last people on the planet to speak to strangers because we're so shy, but only in the sauna we become chatty and and uh, you know open up. And and like you see in Lulu, sometimes it's very lively and chatty, and lots of people are laughing. Mm. And other other times, it's a very quiet, zen-like atmosphere. So I think the key is to always kind of sense when you walk in, and you automatically everybody knows what the atmosphere is like, and then you just organically go into the flow of that that moment in the sauna. So exactly. in Lulu, there's no no rules or outside of the normal, you know, no conflicts. And we Finnish people don't really um, appreciate speaking about controversial politics in the sauna. And, you know, it, there's certain like etiquette, sauna etiquette rules along those lines. But, uh, but apart from that, be as chatty as you wish. And, uh, and it's, yeah. it's all a part of the public sauna culture. Yeah, that that that's interesting. This whole concept of of, of Finns being 
really, really reserved and, and introverts and, and all of that, and how that actually changes as you step through the door, because the same goes for something that comes up in some of these questions, which is the nudity, and mm -hmm. uh, that which is, which is viewed certainly in this country as uh, a, a fairly strange culture or feature in, in the culture. But in Finland, it has always been like that. And it's like, not like that we're, we're jumping around nude everywhere, but the sauna just has a different set of rules. And the same comes to the, to the sort of chattiness or the openness and, and, and all of that, that people just take on a, uh, a, a, a different or maybe, maybe more, more uh, natural persona when they, yeah. uh, when they enter into the sauna. Yeah, it's true. And, and somebody actually just asked a good question about that clothes and co-ed, is it? Um, in Löylu, since we cater to visitors from all around the world, uh, we have to, it has to be bathing suits and it's co-ed. Um, we couldn't be, you know, a nude co-ed sauna. Um, and actually most of the, uh, the public saunas in Finland aren't nude anymore. Well, if you go to Germany and you go to a public sauna, they're all nude. And there's a funny, even if it's very natural for the Germans to be naked in the sauna, I still feel like there's a little bit of an exhibitionist uh, flavor to, to the nudity. So yes, it is natural, but, but then again, it's not completely natural. Whereas mm -hmm. for Finns, we grow up going to the sauna with our families uh, naked and you know kids ki little kids see their parents naked and and then by the time usually in the family by the time the child starts hitting puberty the child decides when he or she doesn't want to go to the sauna anymore with the opposite sex with with his mom or her dad so yeah. it's it's kind of like a natural progression at some point, the child becomes aware of the changes in his or her body and, you know, puberty starts and, and then they only want to go with their mom or only want to go with their dad. And, uh, and that, it, that all happens really naturally without anybody, you know, almost without anybody even paying any attention to it. Yeah. But what it does, what all of this, you know, the, 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 the nudity and seeing you know, your parents and your grandparents and your parents' friends naked in the sauna when you're a kid, it strips away a lot of the taboos of nudity. You know, Finns have a much more straightforward uh, relationship with, with nudity. And, and I, I noticed that especially when I, was a, when I was an exchange student in Baltimore, 1997 to 98, when I was 17, 18, high school senior class, senior year. And, uh, and I, you know, I would notice it when, you know, the, we would go to the gym and the guys would change in the gym locker rooms, you know, finish gym with guys. It's completely normal to be naked in front of your friends, but there was always a little like weird shyness and hesitation and kind of you're hiding when you're changing. And uh, that to me, I remember as a 17 year old was really weird because Mm. I grew up in a, in a grew up in a country where being naked in front of your friends is completely normal. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is different, and uh, I'm 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 really glad that 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 Finland in everything has developed and changed very much. But that's that's still a a piece of the culture that has sort of stayed pretty. Uh, pretty pretty steady and 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 it's uh, certainly welcome hey we're we're coming up on 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 the hour here and uh respecting people's and yours time of course maybe maybe it's time to to uh do two things first of all really really thank you jasper for for your time your insights your opinions your your vision and your just priceless contribution to 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 the sauna, not only to the sauna experience. I think to the culture that you have by by the building depicted behind you. And uh, so, from from all of us and Finlandia Foundation, thank you for taking the time. And then thank I want you. to. 
Sure. And then I want to, to turn it over to Anne-Marie Pastor, who is the president of Finlandia Foundation. And she is going to raffle some extremely exclusive uh, sauna uh, things to, uh, to all, between all of you people who have been hanging around here. So Anne-Marie, over to you. Great. Thank you, Jasper, so much for joining us today. It was very uh, uh, informative and it was great to learn your take on sauna and hear the story of Lölu and how, how it came about, as well as learn also about your upcoming projects. Um, so thank you so much and hope you can still enjoy the rest of your evening and, and probably sauna as it is after all, a sauna Saturday. <laughs>